Let's all start. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. George Samaniego. I welcome you uh, with my wife, uh, Chloe Samaniego, the Renewal Center Director, uh, with our uh, Life in the Spirit Seminar session number four, Receiving God's Gift. Um, last week, uh, we talked about um, New Life by Brenda Biato. And before that is uh, the talk on um, Salvation by Deacon Ken Bisson. And the first talk on, um, I'm sorry, uh, Rafi Mendoza. And then the first talk is God's Love by Deacon Ken uh, Bisson of Maui. Um, everything, um, are, I, would, I would say that all of our Christian and ca uh, Catholic faith stems from the love of God. Uh, John 3.16 states that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, um, that whoever believes in him might not perish but have eternal life. So we are uh, welcoming uh, welcome you, uh, brothers and sisters, to uh, this um, evening. Uh, we ask the Holy Spirit to um, guide us, to empower us, and show us his mercy and his Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Uh, before we start, I'd like you to um, pray this Holy uh, Spirit Chaplet by Blessed Elena Guerra, who is uh, actually the, um, um, the, the, the Holy Spirit Apostle of modern times. So uh, Pope uh, Leo XIII um, um, is uh, one of the popes that, uh, Angelica, you're, you might be loving a lot because uh, he was the pope that actually um, composed the, the prayer of St. Michael. You know, and also he was considered the um, the uh, Rosary Pope because he, he's one of the popes actually that wrote uh, seven encyclicals on the, the Rosary of the Virgin Mary. And also, um, not too many know that in uh, in the you know in during his uh, papacy, he actually dedicated the twentieth century to the Holy Spirit, and his uh, encyclical called uh, Divinum Illud Munus means the encyclical to the Holy Spirit is um, uh, one, uh, he's actually the, the proponent of uh, the Holy Spirit, you know, um, in dedicating the, uh, the 20th century to the Holy Spirit. So this, uh, in 1895, he exhorted all Catholics to devoutly make this Holy Spirit novena. And he suggested a special formula of prayer uh, this said, that says, send forth your spirit and you renew the world. Send forth your spirit and you renew the world. With this in mind, in 1896, uh, Blessed Elena Guerra, uh, the Holy Spirit Apostle of Modern Times, composed uh, this um, chaplet to the Holy Spirit, an invocation to ask the Holy Spirit for a grace of a new Pentecost, which renews the face of the earth. So we're invited to pray this uh, prayer seven times by Blessed Elena Guerra. Father, in the name of Jesus, send forth your spirit and renew the world. Father, in the name of Jesus, send forth your spirit and renew the world. Father, in the name of Jesus, send forth your spirit and renew the world. Father, in the name of Jesus, send forth your spirit and renew the world. Father, in the name of Jesus, send forth your spirit and renew the world. Father, in the name of Jesus, send forth your spirit and renew the world. O Mary, who by the work of the Holy Spirit conceived the Savior, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Show us, show us your glory. 
Fullness of eternal promise, staring in your sons and daughters, earth revealing heaven's wonders, spirit come, spirit come, now the world awaits your presence. This power is within us We will rise to be your witness Spirit come, Spirit come Pour it out, let your love run over Here and now, let your glory fill this house Pour it out, let your love run over Here and now, let your glory fill this house Your soul is spirit, come and be with us Tongues of fire Tongues of fire Testifying of the sun, one desire. Spirit God, Spirit God, speak revival. Prophesy like it is done, one desire. Spirit God, Spirit God, tongues to fire. Testifying of the sun, one desire. Spirit come, Spirit come, speak revival, prophesy like it is done, one desire. Spirit come, Spirit come, tongues of fire, testifying of the sun, one desire. Spirit come, Spirit Come, speak revival, prophesy like it is done, one desire, spirit come, spirit come, Holy Spirit, come and fill this room, Come and be with us, yes, we want you here. Come and fill us, Holy
on fire again Father God Father God your will be done Christ in us your kingdom come Spirit lead us now as one set your church on fire again Father God Father God your will be done Christ in us your kingdom come spirit lead us now as one set your church on fire again one more time father god your will be done christ in us your kingdom come spirit lead us now as one set your church on fire again Jesus, we thank you so much for allowing us to enter into your presence, O Lord, to receive your Holy Spirit, to worship you and to adore you. We glorify you. I welcome everybody to talk number four, session number four, Life in the Spirit Seminar, Receiving God's Gift. And the way I 
propose our posture should be in terms of receiving God's gift is a posture like of the Virgin Mary, of that a posture of docility, uh, a posture of humility, a posture of meekness, and just being open to the works of the Holy Spirit when the Virgin Mary says, be, I am the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to your will. Another posture I would like to propose uh, about receiving God's gift is a, pro a posture of excitement. I, I love these uh, words of uh, Pope St. John Paul II when he, uh, in the piece of Pentecost in 1998, when he said, today I would like to cry out all to you gathered here in St. Peter's Square and to all Christians, open yourselves to the gifts of the Spirit, accept gratefully and obediently the charisms which the Spirit never ceases to bestow on us. And not to be um, outdone, the, the, the Pope that closed the Second Vatican Council uh, spoke in the Christmas time of 973, the fresh breath of the Spirit has come to awaken latent energies within the church to stir up dormant charisms and to infuse a sense of vitality and joy, which makes the church youthful and relevant in every age. I don't know if you've been hearing about what's going on in our world today, that the, 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 our, our young adults, are, are the, the, all the people are droving towards the religion of, I, 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 you know, the religion of, I, I, don't, uh, I don't have one. So I, I, meaning, do you believe in God? I don't believe in God. I don't know if there's a God. And finally, I don't care if there's a God. I feel that the, the way to counteract this, uh, this um, uh, sea of a storm of unbelief is for to make the church vibrant again, youthful and relevant in every age. And, and, and we can only achieve that through being docile to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Pope Paul VI further said in 1972, the church needs her eternal Pentecost. She needs fire in her heart, words on her lips, a glance that is prophetic. And then the opening, the opening prayer of the Second Vatican Council by Pope St. John XXIII, he prayed out, Lord, Renew your wonders in this, our day, as by a new Pentecost. The Constitution of the Catholic Church, uh, Lumen Gentium, states, It is not only through the sacraments and church ministries that the same Holy Spirit sanctifies and leads the people of God and enriches it with virtues, allotting gifts to everyone according as who will. The Holy Spirit gives gifts to everyone, to anyone, according to the will of the Father, quoting 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The Holy Spirit distributes special graces among the faithful of every rank. Lumen Gentium section 12, quoting 1 Corinthians chapter 12 again, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to everyone per profit. These charismatic gifts whether they be the most outstanding, like the gifts of healing, miracles, or the more simple and widely diffused, perhaps the, the gift of hospitality, are to be re received with thanksgiving and consolation, for they are exceedingly suitable and useful for the needs of the church. So these charismatic gifts, these gifts of the Holy Spirit, is exceedingly suitable and useful for the needs of the church. And next week, brothers and sisters, when we, when we lead, uh, James and Tina Andrade leads us into the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we will be praying for these gifts of the Holy Spirit. So the word charism simply means gift, a special grace or favor. That's what charisms mean. Charisms or spiritual gifts are given by the Holy Spirit to Christians to empower us to perform a particular kind of service to the church, to build up the church, and to carry out the church mission in the world. The these charisms are gifts that the Holy Spirit grants us to enable us to collaborate in the salvation of others and in the growth of the body of Christ, the church. Whatever their character, sometimes it is extraordinary, like the gifts of miracles or the gifts of healing, the gifts of tongues. 
these charisms are oriented toward sanctifying grace to make us holy and, and to build up the church. They are at the service of charity, which builds up the church according to the Constitution of the Catholic Church, section 2003. And Lumen Gentium section, um, uh, section 3 sa- states, from the reception of these charisms or gifts, there arise for each believer the right and the duty to use them in the church and in the world for the good of mankind and for the upbuilding of the church. So the constitution of the Catholic Church, our church, is telling us that we should be manifesting and practicing these charismatic gifts. It is our, not only our right, but our duty to use them in the church. Perhaps the most common coded passage in a Life and Spirit seminar or any Life and Spirit seminar is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 10. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given to the Spirit, the expression of wisdom. To another, the expression of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, mighty deeds to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another varieties of tongues, varieties of tongues, not just one tongue, but varieties of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. This is different from the Isaiah gifts that we receive in baptism in Isaiah chapter 11, the gift of wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and the fear of the Lord. This is 1 Corinthian gifts is the charismatic gifts that we're asking the Holy Spirit to give us during next week's baptism of the Holy Spirit. But one and the same Spirit produces all of this, distributing them individually to each as he wishes. Perhaps the hardest uh, gift to explain um, is the gift of tongues. Um, I, I, you know, like you, like maybe some of us, uh, we might be uh, engineers or scientists. I, I'm a physician. I'm a, I'm a scientist. I'm, I, I teach medicine. I'm a, so, I'm an assistant professor of medicine. Um, it, it's hard to me to, to grasp this grip of tongues. But this person, um, Dave Mangan, who um, was baptized in the Holy Spirit in 1967 in the in the, you know, Ark and the Dove in with the Duquesne University with Patty Gallagher Mansfield. He, he was sharing to us that um, uh, during one of the conferences he has attended, he was praying over a, a sister, a nun, and the sister was asking her, uh, asking him for the gift of the Holy Spirit, particularly the gift to pray in tongues. And he prayed over her. And then, you know, um, it was just a simple prayer, Lord, you know, send forth your Holy Spirit upon this sister and may you give her the gift of tongues. And below me, and behold, she was praying in 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 um in another dialect. She was just, she was actually praying in in a Swahili, a language in Africa. And and then she was asking um she asked David Mangan um uh, did did, did I, was I praying in tongues? Yeah, yes, you were praying in uh, Swahili. And 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 then Mangan was saying that he only really knew four or five words in Swahili because he had met this. A person who was trying to go to um, Africa and learn the language, and he was able to memorize only like four or five words. It's like me; I, I memorized a few words in Hebrew. Hinematov umanayim sheberakim gam yakad, meaning how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. I'm not a native Hebrew speaker, but I memorized a few. So David Mangan was saying he's a mathematician, though he likes statistics. And he was saying, what are the odds that this Caucasian nun is able to speak only four words or five words in Swahili on the only four or five words that he knows? He was saying that the odds against that is astronomical. And he also was sharing, Dave Mangan was sharing about his two children. He prayed over his son. His name is also David. David he was five years old. And he has a, another daughter. The youngest was two years old at that time. Her name is Anne. So they prayed over uh, his son, Dave, uh, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and to pray in tongues. And, and Dave, you know, prayed in tongues, but they felt that, hey, Anne is a little too young. He's only two years old. Uh, you know, let's just wait. And then one, when, when they were about to sleep, you know, uh, the middle of the night, they were saying, what's this commotion going on? And so Dave and, and his wife went to the children's room and they overheard their conversation with Dave and the 
you know, little baby Anne, a two years old Anne. And then Dave, uh, little boy Dave at five years old, uh, I was asking Anne, and uh, do you uh, do you accept uh, Jesus as uh, your Lord and Savior? And of course, you know, Big Brother Day, uh, you know, was say, asking. And of course, little sister Anne says, yes, they want Jesus, uh, you know, to give you the Holy Spirit. Of course, yes. And then we'll pray, pray, pray like this. So Dave began to pray in tongues. And then little sister Anne started praying in tongues. So, so it, it was amazing, though, that. Uh, all we need to do is like become like children, you know, like little Dave, uh, little Anne or, or the Virgin Mary, be docile to the Holy Spirit and just allow ourselves to just be open, open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know, I mean, you know, a lot of us would be saying, oh, I, maybe I'm not exactly, um, you know, really wanted that gift or, not, you know, that maybe gift of healing, maybe not a, really a gift of tongues. But if, if I were you, if I were you, why not be open to everything, though? You know, I mean, you know, not because we're greedy, but because we're needy. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the gifts in order to make the church more holy and in us to fight, you know, the, the terrors of what's going on right now. Evil is rampant. And all we, all we can hang on is the Lord. All we can ask is for the Holy Spirit to come into our lives and to equip us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So to pray and speak in tongues is to pray in what could be an earthly or heavenly language, a language that is current on earth or one that is long dead, or, you know, like Aramaic, perhaps like an old of old dialects in Aramaic, perhaps. Um, one of our prayer group uh, members um, asked my other, other prayer group members, uh, her name was Lucy, and then uh you know, Nympha was asking Lucy, hey, Nymph, uh, you know, I didn't know you, uh, or not, uh, so maybe Marina. Connie, Connie was asking, yeah. uh, Manang Marina was asking, hey, Lucy, I didn't know you need, uh, you speak Tagalog. Oh, no, I don't speak Tagalog. I'm uh, Chinese. I'm, uh, I, I only can speak is uh, a little English and uh, some Chinese. So apparently, though, the way she speaks in tongues is by Tagalog, Tagalog language, the Filipino language. This is awesome, you know. So it, I, I didn't know it can happen to us in our prayer group, but it did. That um, that um, you know, um, current language is being used by a non-native speaker in a way to glorify the Lord. So, so tongues is a spontaneous and inspired utterance by the Holy Spirit in which we use our voice according to the Spirit's prompting. To speak or sing in tongues is to pray in the Spirit. It is when the believer allows the Holy Spirit to guide and form the words or he she utters. The believer uses their tongue, their mouth, their words, but the Holy Spirit inspires. As in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, all of them began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. The gift is not necessarily a sign of being filled with the Spirit. It is not a sign that one is holy or more holy than the other. It does, it does not mean that with the, uh, we, you know, if you did not receive the gift of tongues, that you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit. So, but, but, but having the gift of tongues or singing tongues is just a wonderful uh, way to edify the church, edify one another. It is a love language when one is lost in wonder. Love and praise and human words are inadequate or exhausted to express our inner feelings. So, Take, take, take in point the English language. How can you use the English language enough to magnify the Lord? He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the creator of the universe, the Alpha and the Omega. Sooner rather than later, the English language will fail to give enough glory to our God and we reach, we reach to this gift of tongues, our love language to the Lord, to give him praise and glory. As in Acts chapter 2, verse 11, when people were saying, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Acts chapter 10, verse 46. So tongues, speaking in tongues and praying in tongues are expression of verbal intimacy with God. It provides a new dimension, a new dimension in a person's prayer life. Since the spirit within us is praying, in this particular deep word from Romans chapter 8 is my favorite prayer or quotation or passage about the tongues. For we do not know 
how we ought to pray. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans and utterances, in other translations, with, with sighs too deep for words. So the Spirit within us help us to worship the Lord with groans, with utterances, that words alone is not enough. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. So praying in tongues sets us um, off the other word gifts of the Spirit, like praying in tongues makes us, um, you know, enable us to be open to the gifts of prophecy, interpretation of tongues, word of knowledge, and the word of wisdom, and the other Corinthian gifts of the chars charismatic gifts. So praying in tongues brings deliverance, inspiration, refreshment, revival, wisdom. It is a means to victory in spiritual warfare. The gift is often initially received at a time when a person is baptized in the Holy Spirit. So we'll be praying. James and Tina will be leading us next week when the baptism of the Holy Spirit for the gift of tongues. But it is not unusual that it is received at a later time as one grows in freedom and closeness to the Lord. So for our brothers and sisters who are praying for the gift of tongues next week and didn't get it, you know, it is not unusual. The biggest block that I can tell, tell you is this head knowledge. I was telling myself, you know what? Speaking in tongues is self-hypnosis. I'm a, I'm a scientist. I'm a doctor. But then again, when, when my brothers and sisters, I mean, my, my two brothers was laid their hands upon me. I kid you not. I was not just praying in short sentences. I was actually literally singing in tongues. You know, I was praising God in song, you know, in, in complete sentences, though. And I was just telling them, please do not be disappointed. I, I don't I'm not necessarily OK with self-hypnosis, like praying in tongues that that's my head knowledge. But then again, when I, you know, um, allowed myself to be docile to the Holy Spirit, to surrender to God's grace and love and mercy, then I received the gift of tongues. So the gift of tongues is a tremendous blessing for our spiritual lives. If you have the gift. Thank God. And if you don't yet have it, exercise it, ask the Lord for it, eagerly desire it, and praise and bless the Lord. So the gift of prophecy, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 says, pursue love. You know, with all the gifts, without love, we're like clanging symbols. But St. Paul says, but strive eagerly for the spiritual gifts above all that you may prophesy. Prophesy gives encouragement and strength in our weakness, corrects our sins, calls us to account, draws us closer to God in worship, and stir up a response in God's people, such as joy, freedom, peace, tranquility, excitement, enthusiasm, and willingness to surrender to the Lord. It is the gift of prophecy is an anointed communication from God to an individual or a group of believers to give encouragement, to give reproof, inspiration, or guidance. It is, in fact, a normal part of our prayer group gathering, and it should be encouraged and sought on, for our, on a regular basis. Prophecies come in three ways. It could be an entire message, you know, a few words, um, or, or, or a sense of a prophetic word. Like, you know, like I say, I have a sense that, the Lord is speaking to us right now and is giving us this gift of prof prophecy or this gift of word of knowledge. And that's, it doesn't have to be a complete word, but it could just be a sense. It might be accompanied by tingling up and down the spine, a warm feeling all over, a racing of the heart. In some ways, the Lord makes his presence felt, at least in the early stages of exercising the gift. We might feel a certain feeling of, you know, like a, a warm feeling. But often in time, this gives way to just knowing that you have to speak. It is important to respond to the Holy Spirit's promptings. One way to, to uh, practice prophecy is that one should speak clearly and loudly enough to be heard by all. It should not be in old English or emotionally destructive way. Like we don't have to say, thus says the Lord all the time. We, we can... Um, address uh, one another in plain English. Our prophesying is imperfect because we are imperfect, because it comes to human intermediaries, it comes to us. But practice develop, uh, but practicing 
the gifts of prophecy and the prayer meeting makes our ability to prophesy um, with greater clarity. And it becomes, uh, one thing we should actually know is that we should just make, make sure that the, the words that we prophesy is in tune with scripture and church teachings. It might be a prophetic oracle or a foretelling of the future. It might be a prophetic exhortation. So when we're doing praise and worship, you can just say, I says the Lord is asking us to just give him praise and glory. And that could be a prophecy. It could be an inspired prayer, a prophetic song. It might be describing a vision and its meaning. It can take many forms like um, a prophetic teaching or preaching. So sometimes while teaching, um, we, I could be prophesying at the same time. It could be inspired reading, which is the most commonly exercised form of the word gifts. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, refuting error, for correcting and training in holiness, 2 Timothy 3.16. Uh, but a common error is to read a, a, a passage too long that the main point of the reading is missed or ignored. One should walk, one should walk with the word you speak and be sensitive to the mood of the spirit. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the prophetic utterances. Test everything. This is one of the um, one of my favorite passages in First Thessalonians, though, which says there: Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances, but test everything. We should maintain a teachable spirit. Wait for the Lord. Patience is a key to maturity. God's God's vision is a vision of love, a vision of mercy. It is not your task to fulfill the word. It is the Lord. So the testing of prophecy are points to consider. Is it, does it conform to the word in scripture? Is the context of love, uh, it, is love spoken through the, through the prophetic voice? Is the tone of the voice and the words of the speaker in line with the, with, uh, the, the Christianity and broad, you know, Christian brotherhood and holiness? Does it edify those who hear the word? Does it help strengthen the listener? Is it consistent with the way the Holy Spirit um, has um, been um, uh, molding you thus far? And if it's a, a, a prophecy that foretells, does the, does the prophecy come to pass? Interpretation of tongues. Those who use this gift in private prayer may also use to address this in the assembly in tongues but it needs an interpretation. Interpretation of tongues is not a translation, but an interpretation, giving the sense of the message. And this is one when, you know, um, you're not just give, uh, praying in tongues by yourself, but you actually felt compelled by the Holy Spirit to proclaim your, um, your tongues in, in, with the assembly, with, with, you know, maybe taking the mic and speaking, your, you know, speaking a word in tongue. Um, it, one thing to... Um, to, to take um, hold about interpretation of tongues is that if no one interprets, then the one who spoke in tongues should give the interpretation. Both the speaking in tongues and the interpretation of tongues are gifts of the Holy Spirit for our edification, our growth, strengthening, upbuilding, encouragement, and for revelation. God freely and sovereignly gives the gift to whomever he chooses. The person giving the interpretation may receive it, as if the person were speaking directly to them in their own language. It, must, it may be a phrase or a word that comes as the individual speaking in tongues. It may come in a variety of ways, similar to length and style of the tongue spoken. This is the interpretation. Or it may be completely different, expressed in longer, shorter words, as a vision, a sense, an inspired thought, or a symbol in pictures. Usually, the interpretation of tongues spoken will be to glorify God, in his greatness. It may be a message very much like prophecy. It enables the one with interpretation to communicate in the language of the listeners. It is important that the interpretation be given in order that the assembly might be edified and built up. If there is no interpretation, then the speaker in tongues is actually discouraged and may not continue to exercise the gift in future um, venues. When it is sung, it is very beautiful, touching the heart and stirring the spirit of the listeners. I've been to some of the um, big um, you know, uh, conferences of uh, Joy of the Lord in the Philippines. They're like 5,000 strong. One will 
you know, grab the mic and sing in tongues. And another one afterwards will be singing the interpretation of the tongue. And it's just so beautiful. So edifying. You, you, you felt that the love of the Lord is with the congregation. St. Paul says that the tongues must be interpreted. Otherwise, he forbids the continued use of the tongues without interpretation. So 1 Corinthians chapter 14 highlights that. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let it be two or at the most three, and in each in turn, and one should, and one should interpret. But if there is no interpreter, the person should keep silent in the church and speak to himself and to God. More than one person may be used to complete the interpretation, but there should not be several interpretations, especially if they are contradictory. When one addresses the assembly in tongues, the assembly should wait and ask for the interpretation before moving on. I remember in one of our conferences, uh, Bishop Sam Jacob asked for the interpretation before moving on. So receiving God's gift. We need all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I, I, you know, because of the interest of time, I can talk about all the gifts. I, you know, um, I can talk about miracles. I can talk about uh, word of knowledge, you know, word of wisdom. I, I have other talks in the future. But, but you know, this, these three gifts, I feel, is um, something we can, can hold on um, for, for the mature that has been, uh, been, been in the Life and Spirit um, uh, renewal for a long time. Interpretation of tongues is useful for them. And for the beginners, I feel that um, the gift of tongues and prophecy is uh, what is, um, you know, what is needed. One is not more important than another in terms of the, uh, God's gift, but all the gifts are necessary for reveal, revealing and building the kingdom of God. We need to be empowered for the ministry of service that we may share the mission of Jesus as bearers of the spirit without measure. And uh, in my parting uh, words to, to all of us uh, with, with receiving God's gifts, not by might, nor by power, but my by spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 61. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we'll have some um, time for a Q&A, but um, you know, for, uh, in preparation for next week's talk, uh, next week talk I, I have these uh, questions for reflection, um, you know, maybe tonight and next week and the next few days. Um, uh, first question that you can reflect upon, how can the charisms, tongues, prophecy help you in your walk with the Lord, for example, in your daily life, in your prayer life, or in a prayer meeting? Number two, what do you expect to happen when we pray for baptism in the Holy Spirit next week? You know, I'm just so excited, you know, about next week. Uh, you know, I, I, I would like you to reflect on this, on these two questions as we wait for next week, Friday when um, James and Tina Andrade prays for us in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and also prays for the gift of, 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 of these gifts. I, I pray that, uh, O oh, Heavenly Father, send forth your Holy Spirit upon us and give us your grace, your mercy, your love, your, your, your Holy Spirit upon us and give us the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. Oh, by the way, um, the, our uh, speaker for next week uh, uh, is reminding us to bring uh, spiritual items, statues, uh, rosaries, uh, scapulars, uh, blessed uh, oil, salt, um, Bible, uh, pictures, you know, um, uh, that'll be part of our, um, you know, uh, next week's um, uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit to be given by um, two-time chair. Um, uh, of uh, the uh, uh, chairperson of the Hawaii Catholic Charismatic Renewals um, Services, uh, James Andrade and Tina Andrade. Thank you, Jesus. Um, we have a few moments for, um, for questions, uh, if there's any other questions. Otherwise, we can, um, you know, um, uh, we can um, uh, actually um, have a, a, a prayer, prayer uh, you know, um, prayer, uh, last prayer, and also um, um, and petitions. Oh, there's a prayer petition here in the chat um, that um, one of um, uh, um, Brenda's um, uh, daughter, uh, youngest daughter, tested positive for COVID in Colorado, um, and um, she is uh, working, uh, you know, as a subject teacher and uh, asking for a, a prayer 
uh, for, for her and her two children. Um, I, I myself, I'm a physician working in Straub and uh, we are um, inundated, so to speak, for lack of a better word, with uh, COVID uh, patients. Um, we're working long hours. Um, last uh, this, this month alone, I, I work for 25 days straight and I think I'm working for 28 days in this month uh, because of the, um, the COVID. Heavenly Father, we ask you to um, send forth your Holy Spirit upon uh, Brenna's daughter and the people suffering COVID. We also pray that uh, two of our prayer, um, prayer group lead, uh, leaders in White Paul who had COVID also, and we ask you to, um, to bless them and to heal them, O oh Lord. Send forth your Holy Spirit upon them, O oh Lord, and um, renew the face of the earth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. If there's no uh, question, we can actually um, you know, uh, pray um, uh, a closing prayer, and then we can um, open ourselves to uh, the last song. Heavenly Father, we glorify you, O oh Lord God. We give you honor and praise. We ask you to help us as we um, live a life in the Holy Spirit. We offer to you, O oh Lord God, our past, our present, our future. We offer to you, O oh Lord God, our, our dreams, our hopes, our aspirations. We offer to you, O oh Lord God, during this time of uncertainty that you send forth your Holy Spirit upon us. For the youth and the young adults, O oh Lord, that are are um, suffering right now with um, even 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 uh, with loneliness and depression and isolation. Oh Lord, um, e even for some uh, are are contemplating suicide. Oh Lord, we ask you that you empower them individually. Oh Lord God, and send forth your your Holy Spirit upon them and and speak to them. Oh Lord, in a way that you only can. Oh Lord, in their hearts, we ask you, Oh Lord God, to to anoint us, give us your Holy Spirit, give us your gifts, the gifts of wisdom, of prophecy, knowledge, miracles, healing, give of tongues, interpretation of tongues, the gift of prophecy, O oh Lord. We ask you, O oh Lord God, to send forth your Holy Spirit upon us as we give you honor and glory and praise. Come, Holy Spirit, come. In the name of the Father and Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs> Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come, come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me come down. Spirit, when you move, it make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. We want you, Holy Spirit. Do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. And fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Yes, come and fill us. We're ready for you. 
Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. And Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Come down. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pass. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you. Holy Spirit. Holy Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. 